This episode of Our Wyoming Life is sponsored by you. To all of our generous supporters through Patreon, both Aaron and I want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. To learn more how you can support this channel, please follow the link in the description to our Patreon page. Hi, I'm Mike. Today, we continue a series called The History of the Ranch, and now we get a chance to travel back in time. When making a living here seemed impossible. Many quit and gave up, but those who stayed gave us our future on our Wyoming life. Welcome back to Our Wyoming Life. I love having the chance to bring you along with us from calving to haying to winter feeding and everything in between. It's our honor to have you along with us for the ride. Please subscribe and continue with us as we explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. Last month, we started this series of videos taking a look at the history of the ranch. We took you through how we got here, what keeps us here and why. The response, was awesome, and I really want to thank you for supporting this project. We all have history all around us. Some choose not to look at it, but some do. And I feel that by looking at the history, the people that came before you, you can get an even better look inside your own life. What should matter, and how lucky we are. We're located up in the corner of Northeast Wyoming, an area known as the Powder River Basin stretching from the Bighorn Mountains of Wyoming to the Black Hills of South Dakota. This entire area was a hunting ground for many Indian tribes of the area. The Lakota Sioux of the Black Hills, the Blackfeet, the Cheyenne, and the Arapaho were known to hunt here. Buffalo roamed this area, enjoying the rich grasses for generations. The native tribes valued the area as the perfect resource that it was. The first white explorers began moving through this area in the early 1800s. Explorers and trappers who traded with the Crow Indians. And in 1851, one of the first records near the ranch were recorded as a missionary traveled close by, noting the pumpkin buttes that are located just south of the ranch itself. In order to protect white travelers, the U.S. Army was ordered to patrol the area. Conflicts were common between white explorers and the Sioux, the Cheyenne, and the Arapaho tribes, including the Bone Pile Creek Battle, which took place right here on the ranch from August 13th through the 15th in 1865. We're going to visit that battle in an upcoming episode, but for now, keep in mind that no one was settling in this area, or those that were, were taking their lives into their own hands. The earliest cattle drives from Texas to Montana traveled through this area in about 1866. And in 1876, the U.S. government established the reservations and ordered all Indians to move there, causing many more conflicts throughout the area. It was 1878 before the Powder River Basin was considered open to white people. Soon after, a few cattle ranchers who had been through the area on those cattle drives from Texas to Montana decided to set up ranches in the area, even though they'd never spent much time here. Soon, a very interesting lesson was learned after the winter of 1886 and 87. Winter in this area can be hard and unpredictable. That winter destroyed the hopes of many ranchers in the area, although a few did stick around. Those that did began growing their own hay for cattle feed over the winter, or even moving cattle out of the state for better conditions. For this area of Wyoming, that's how life went on for many years. The Homestead Act was enacted in 1862, allowing homesteaders to be gifted 160 acres and settle and farm the land. And although a few of those farming homesteads were granted in the area, it was a hard life to live off of 160 acres. In 1916, the stock raising homestead was approved allowing for settlers to receive 640 acres of public land for ranching purposes. This was a game changer in the area, 
and brought about a flood of settlers, including those that settled the land that I'm standing on right now. Orlando Barkley filed in Sundance, Wyoming for his homestead right here and began a new life that was far from easy. Because many settlers were still coming from the east, farming is what they knew and what they were basing their homesteads on. Although farming here proved to be full of new challenges that had never been seen. Many of the settlers created their first homes in dugouts, basic holes in the ground, dug and reinforced with rock and stone. A very humble beginnings to a new life. Others built cabins and lived in them with their entire families through good times and bad. They dug coal out of the side of hills to heat their homes and hunted wild antelope on the plains. Farming here was hard. Constant wind had eroded the topsoil and sandy soil didn't hold the nutrients that crops needed to grow and even trees were, were noticeably absent from the landscape as the plains offered no protection and little rain to support growth. Through drought and through blizzard, and of course the grasshopper infestation of 1948 that moved many farmers out of farming and trying to grow wheat, corn, and potatoes. Difficult crops to grow to start with and made even harder by the environment of the area. Although the land wasn't suited to farming, grass grew like crazy. And the old ranchers that moved cattle through the area knew that. And it wasn't long before the settlers began their own livestock operations, raising everything from goats to sheep to cattle. And life started to make sense. The blizzards continued, so did the drought, insects and predators, and even tornadoes that turned away some, but others stayed. They fought through the hardship and they made a name for themselves by doing so. The Barclays that originally settled this ranch grew the ranch through marriage and through trades and buying and selling. This area was known as the Bethlehem community and they built a church, they taught at schools and they raised Hereford cattle, which they sold at auction right here on the ranch. It's through everybody that came here before us, their hard work that got us to where we are today. Gilbert bought this ranch in the early 1990s from the Barclays, but it wasn't only them. It was those that came before them that established the area as a worthwhile place to settle and those that fought the battles, those that learned how to make the best use of the land and make it work for them. When I look back at these pictures and walk through these points of history, I'm often reminded of these people and these stories and the lessons. I sometimes wonder if in a hundred years our great-grandchildren will look at what we're doing and wonder how we got here and what drove us to try new things and how those new things affected them. Each and every one of us, no, no matter what you're doing, you're making history right now. Thanks for stepping back in time with me. When Abraham Lincoln signed the Homestead Act, it opened a half a million acres in the Western US for settlement. And it made a difference in many people's lives, good and bad. But without it, the ranches we know it today wouldn't be here and our future would be unknown. And without history, there's no future. And history is who we are. A very special thanks this week goes out to the Wyoming State Historical Society, the city of Gillette, Campbell County, and the Rockpile Museum, along with its director, Robert Henning, who I hung out with for about three hours to help gather the photos and information for this episode. Be sure to subscribe and hit that little bell so hopefully you get notifications when our next video comes out. And as next month, we dig even deeper, literally into the history of the ranch. That said, have a Merry Christmas, and we'll see you again soon on our Wyoming Life.